श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम From the known, we reach the unknown. This is the rule. This is called as Shakha Chandra Nyay in the Nyaya Shastra. For example, I'll tell you in the language what we understand. When we say Shakha Chandra Nyay, we get lost. Do you know Mr. Gupta Ji? No, I don't know. Okay, do you know Mr. Varma? Yes, I know. He has cheated me a lot. Then, Gupta Ji is his son-in-law. Oh. So, Gupta Ji was not known to me. Varma Ji, I know very well. Because he cheated. Then after that, I come in contact with Gupta Ji. And I have first-hand information about Gupta Ji in my life. Again, somebody meets me and asks, do you know Gupta Ji? Very well. Now, I don't require Varma Ji to know. If this is clear, what do we know? We know this world. Paramatma, we don't know. So, look here. The one who created this world is Paramatma. Aha! So, what the world did? Cheated me. <laughs> is it not? The world is constantly cheating us. We are running for getting something. We are hardly getting anything from this world. And then we go to the reference. Paramaji, yeah, I never expected. So we go to, now who is the Varma in this story? God. We go to God. Dunya banane wale? Kahe ko dunya banane? See, this is how the unknown is reached through the reference of the known. This is the technique. And this technique is called as the, uh, what we are studying is dharana. I won't call meditation. It is the most corrupted word. Dharana. Meditation or dharana is differently understood in different sciences. For example, in yoga, Patanjali yoga, dharana is fixation of the mind in a particular place for a longer period of time, that is called as dharana. So, in the uh, last three stages of Ashtanga Yoga, first is Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayam, Pratyahar, five of them, then dharana, Dhyan, Samadhi. The dharana is fixing the mind in one place, Desha, Bandha, then <coughs> Dhyana is fixing the mind in the same place on one object. So, dharana is with reference to the place, dhyana is with reference to the object, and then comes samadhi, fixation of the mind in the same place, on the same yeah. object, for a long period of time. These three things. When these three things are perfected, then trayam ekatra sayyamaha. Then it is called as sayyama. So actually Ashtanga Yoga begins from the yama and concludes in the sayyama. But the sayyama is given minimum importance when these uh, yoga studios are run. Therefore, this is the meaning of dharana in Patanjali Yoga Darshan. 
fixation of the mind in one particular place. Therefore, they tell that now fix your mind in the brumadya, that is the in between the eyebrows. So they will be taking their eyes up there and fix it there. After some time, they definitely get headache. Nothing else. Because place is important for them. Now in this Vijnana Mahara, what we are studying is Dharana is not this, but Dharana is you hold on to this. Dharana like we all have the dharana that we are Indians. Right from childhood something is told and we hold on to that. Like one Gujarati boy I asked him, I said, hey Gujju, how are you? He became angry. I am not a Gujju. Right? Then what are you? I am Lohana Kachi. I said, hey man, what is the meaning of Kachi? I don't know. The many of you may not be knowing. Kachi is also referring to the underwear. <laughs> so I asked him, do you know how to tie the underwear? No, 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 mommy does it for me. But I am a Kachi. And what is the meaning of Lohana? I don't know. Then who are you? Lohana Kachi. This is dharana. We hold on to that. See? Whatever um, is given us as an assignment, hold on to that. And by that slowly, our earlier notions get erased without creating new notions. This is the basic difference in the dharana according to this and all other paths. You know, go in the karma marga. Earlier I was doing bad karma, now I do good karma. Karma is still there. And I is also there. Therefore, dharana has to be understood clearly. Dharana means that we are slowly holding on to the practice. Dharana, dharana, holding on to this practice. Now there are 112 practices given. Depending upon one's natural inclination, one should do it. We must know everything, but we should practice something. See? Now, what is the one's inclination? How do I know? Questions have no end. One lady asked me this question. Swamiji, uh, can you select um, an Ishta Devata for me? You don't know what questions I have face. Because I get confused. There are so many gods. What should I do? I said anything you take. No, no, no. You have to tell me. I said, okay. You start enumerating the names of the god. So she started Hanumanji, Ram and a dozen names she said. Now you tell me. I said, you start Hanumanji. What do you Sorry to disturb your sleep. Therefore, I said you start with Hanumanji. But then why did you tell me Hanumanji? Again question. I said first of all, I did a mistake in talking to you. Dharana, you have to discover what is natural inclination for you. And according to that, it will be practiced. Now we start with the first dharana, first yogic practice. Sri Bhairo Uvacha Urdhve Prano Yado Jeevaha Visargatma Parochared Utpatti Dutayasthane Bharanad Bharitasthidihi And these are all very subtle points and very easy to understand. <coughs> Urdhve prano adho jivaha visargatma para ucchare para ucchare para means paramatma pure consciousness 
because of this two things happen when a child is born and if the child doesn't cry then the other people start crying so what they do they do urdhva mool mada shakam hold the child upside down with the legs there the child is held and they splash extremely cold water on that child as a result the life suddenly becomes contracted and the diaphragm becomes flat and when the diaphragm becomes flat then a vacuum is created in the thorax as a result air is sucked in therefore breathing in is a passive process it is not active and the moment the air enters the lungs it becomes prana and therefore this is called as apana vayu entering and when this apana vayu reaches then the life begins then after that it doesn't remain all the time inside then again it is thrown out so there is a continuous process initiated when the air is taken in breathing in apana vayu and breathing out is prana so this prana apana is a continuous process going on and in this process i is not involved how many pranayam can you do anulom vilom um 10 20 no no you have to do 21000 oh god 21000 pranayam anulom vilom nose will go away do you know how many times you breathe naturally 200 1600 times per day has anybody ever said i have been breathing so much every day now i am damn tired i am not going to breathe no because breathing is not done it happens and this is how the life is sustained so urdhve prano yado jivah so apana vayu is called a jiva or the life beginning point and prana when the air goes out and forgets to come are kaha jana hai then the body falls dead now visargatma visarga is creation this is how the life is created in the form of a jiva and there are for utpatti dutaya sthane and these are very uh, great technical terms in this yoga shastra in the uh, tantra shastra it is called as um, dwadashangula in upanish in uh, purusha sukta it comes atyatishth dashangula here it is dwadashangula dwadashangula means 12 fingers 12 fingers means if you keep fingers like this one above other what is the length that is called as 12 fingers width normally when you expand your these thumb and the small finger maximum that distance normally is around 12 fingers and our whole body is divided on the basis of this 12 fingers from muladhar up to the manipur is the distance of 12 fingers this is the samsar from the manipur up to this uh, anahata another 12 fingers this is a uh, seeker is in the making then from the anahat up to the throat that is the uh, vishuddha chakra the practice is going intensely then from the throat up to the bhrumadhya that is further evolution and from bhrumadhya to sahasra all the distances are 12 12 fingers and <coughs> be very attentive our body is <coughs> in a capsule capsule of consciousness when the air is 
beyond the boundary of this conscious capsule around our body, it is only air. But when the same air enters this particular boundary line of Dvadashangula, thereafter this air becomes the prana and it gets divided into five physiological systems and they are called as prana, pana, vyana, udana, samana. So, first, uh, adho jivaha, when the air enters, from where the prana begins? From the dvadashangula, from the nose, keep a distance of this much, this is the point. From here, the air enters and becomes prana, and where does it go? The inner dvadashangula, from the throat up to the your uh, heart, spiritual heart, is dvadashangula. So there are two points. One is external dvadashangula, second is internal dvadashangula. And the air is constantly moving between these two points. Now, the teacher says, Utpati dvitiya sthane bharanan bharitas sthiti hi. Now, when you are sitting quiet, so first of all, you have understood now. These are the two points. Now, you have to remain, don't uh, concentrate. Concentration is a very bad practice. That will not allow you to come out of the um, prison of mind. Simply be aware, breathing is happening. When we practice remaining in awareness most of the time in all the activities, you will be always relaxed. Why we get tired? Because we concentrate. And concentration is always on others. You are listening to me. This is just an example. You are listening to me with concentration. And then you will get tired. But if you simply remain aware, Barka Darwaja Ban Karo. They will get disturbed by our satsang. So, now these are the two points that teacher tells here, Bharanath. Now remain in awareness with reference to these two points. They are sitting quite comfortable. You don't have to achieve anything. Whether you are able to do or not able to do, doesn't matter. Now these two points are given to you. See that the awareness remains within these two points. Visargatma. Maranar, fill in these two, the gap between the two points only by awareness. Relax, no tension. Gain and loss is only in Prakriti. On the spiritual path, there is no gain, there is no loss. Now further, the word used is Visargatma. Now those of you who know Sanskrit, they know when certain words are followed by two dots, like the nominative case of the uh, Akaranta Pullingi Shabda, Rama. So, Ramaha, Ramo, Ramaha, Ramam, Ramo, Raman. So, that Visarga has two dots. These two dots are Bahir Kumbhak and uh, not Bahir Dwadashanta and under, in, Inner Dwadashanta. Visarga. 
Now these two dots in Visarga, in Sanskrit writing, one above the other. The lower dot is Shiva and the upper dot is Shakti. Whole world is a play between Shiva Shakti. In Tantra, it is Shiva Shakti Tantra. In Vaishnava, it is Radha Krishna. And therefore, Radha is not married to Bhagwan Krishna. To get married, you have to be someone other than the person. See, friends. So when we are thus, remaining in awareness between these two points, so when we are breathing in apana, we are with the Shiva. And throw out the Prakriti. This is how the Hamsa or the Soham Mantra is incessantly growing, going on. This prana, sakarat bahiryati, hakarat vishet punah. When we breathe in, it is her. When we breathe out, it is sir. So her, sir. In between, put a bindu. It becomes ham sa. So this, this is called a japa japa. Or it is Dvipada Gayatri. So we are simply remaining aware and it is going on. Sakar Hakar. Sakar Hakar. Join them, it becomes Hamsa or Soham. Meaning is the same. When we thus remain in extreme awareness, Because you are not doing breathing and also you are not concentrating, it is not tiresome. And when we do breathing, like in pranayam, and when we concentrate, like in the many yogic practices, like uh, Tratak, etc., you are bound to get tired. So you are relaxed because now you are remaining more and more in awareness. Your mind is slowly subordinated. Then none of the things around us will ever disturb us or attract our mind. Now this practice is prana based and it cannot be perfected overnight. Don't overdo. Apni avkat paichanu. Find out how much we can naturally remain without struggle. So we start slowly, steadily. Like a child learns how to walk. Right after birth, the child doesn't start running. He starts his own techniques. And then slowly, step by step, then he starts walking. In the same manner. Spend at a time, maximum 20 seconds, 25 seconds and give a break. Like those who are working on the laptops or computers, they are told, after one hour take a break. Just go for a walk, have a cup of tea. Because the mind has been too much involved, then you get tired. Similarly, 
don't do too much. Otherwise, then there is a competition. No competition. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, then relax. Then again sit. And slowly, one day, by God's grace, you will get a knack of differentiating between concentration and remaining aware. Many of them get lost in the mindfulness. They don't want to leave the mind. Mind is fooling us. Mindfulness. Go beyond the mind. And these hamsa are the soham japa. When we do it as a japa, soham, 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 you are maintaining the mind. You are not dissolving the mind. Many a times we are told that try to synchronize the Lord's name with the mind. It is good only initially. But don't hold on to it throughout life. That will not allow the mind to be dissolved. Mind will remain. Therefore, Urdhve prano yado jivaha visargatma paro para uchare. Uchara means expansion. Ut means above. Urdhva mula madashakam. Or udasina. Like I am udasina. You are sitting below, I am sitting at a higher level. Utasina. Uchara. Same manner. This consciousness, as it rises, when we become more and more aware of this process that is going on without involving an element of your participation as a doer, simply remain aware. Purdhve prano yada jivaha. So this is what is called the jiva. The person, then the mirror, and entry of the person in the mirror. These three things are required for a reflection to happen. So if we have to define what is the reflection, we will have to say reflection is equal to the original object plus the media of reflection plus the reflection. Now this reflection which is inside the mirror, is it influenced? Think. The other day I was in uh, Brisbane, we went on the seaside. Beautiful white sea like this, clean water. You can see each and every stone below the waters, clean. So I was walking with my doctor friends. I said, hey, stop. Then we are facing the um, away from the sea the, because the sun was coming from that side. I said, now look here down in the waters. Be attentive. What are you seeing in the water? He said, nothing, water only and the uh, uh, floor. I said, no man, be intelligent. Then I told him, we are seeing our shadow, is it not? Yes, yes, we are seeing the shadow. Very good. Now start contemplation. When the water is moving, is the shadow moving? Because of the waters, is the shadow becoming wet? But we are seeing that. Now what is the reason? The reason is shadow doesn't exist. As we can fish out the fish from the waters, can we fish out the shadow out of the water? We cannot. So when it doesn't exist, how it can get influence? 
Now bring this subjectively. You are the man. Wife is the mirror. And in that wife, your reflection as a husband. Can this husband become miserable? Why? He doesn't exist. Then what is husband? Adjustment. That's it. But who is miserable? This non-existing entity called as the husband. Exactly the same way. Paramatma expressing through the limitations of the Panchakoshas as life in Sanskrit. It is called as Jivana. As life. So life is a common factor. But instead of that common life, we reduce it to jiva. No is deleted. When you say jiva, na, there is no jiva. There is only life. Therefore, these techniques help us give up the multiplicity and march towards the unity. Objects are many, give up, come to the sense organs. Sense organs are many, give up, come to the mind. Mind has many confusion thoughts, give up, come to the intellect. And give up the arrogance of logic, come to the life. Life-wise, we are all common. Whether human beings or animals or plants. See, friends, I am one. When I am expressing through my speech, I have become a speaker. When I am using my hand to scratch my face, I have become a scratcher. When I walk, I have become a walker. Have I become many? The one alone, because of the many gadgets, appears to have become many. In the same manner, one reality alone, appears to have become many. Therefore, it is an appearance. It is not reality. With this understanding, leading life is called as living in meditation. Otherwise, the whole life is struggle, struggle, struggle. And struggle is only because we have become extrovert. We want to serve the society. We want to do the things. If I want to serve the society, what will I do? For example, suppose I am teetotaler. Why suppose yeah, I am teetotaler? Forgot about it. So I am a teetotaler. So what will be my Sama Seva? Nobody should drink. Think. See, all these NGOs, corrupt bodies, they are doing like that. Green peace. All rubbish. Because Samasya is nothing but imposition of our views on others. If I am a student of Bhagavad Gita, I will say, I want to see that everybody in this world should have a Gita in their hand. This is not spiritual practice. Therefore, here, when we are thus becoming more and more aware of all these things and live in that awareness, the net result is you will be always at peace with yourself. And this is the highest achievement in one's life. In the second chapter, Bhagavan Sri Krishna says, Nasti buddhihi ayuktasya <coughs> Nacha yuktasya bhavana, nacha bhavayata shantihi, ashantasya kutas sukham. Ayuktasya buddhihi nasti. The one who is not having the uh, yukti means knack. Spiritual life is a knack. To remain happy is a knack. We learn swimming, it is a knack. Once I was somewhere, me, my friend, his wife and their small child. 
maybe two years or three years. We went for swimming to some uh, swimming pool. So I got inside. His wife also got inside. The child was there. I said, hey, Mahatma Ji, come in. So he said, no, no, Swamiji, I don't want to come. His wife told Swamiji, he doesn't know swimming. I said, hey, for a bacha, he's swimming and chota, sir. How come you don't? No, 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 I can't learn swimming. Now tell me, when you have learned swimming, exactly what happened? See, friends, just a knack. When we learn riding a bicycle, balancing is a knack. And therefore, once we learn riding a bicycle, throughout life we never forget. Because it is not learned by the mind. Whatever you learn by the mind, you will forget. And therefore, the truth is known only once. Sthitva syam antakalepi brahma nirvana murichati. E friends. So, nasti buddhi ayuktasya. We have to have this knack of understanding. And that knack, I tell you, what is that knack? Very simple. We are in this world only to learn, learn and learn. Every experience of our life is our guru if we are able to learn from every experience. See? But normally, instead of learning, we react. I tell you how learning is solving all the problems of life. This happened in Bombay many, many years before. I went to my friend's place. And um, he had a daughter. Now she must be a mother or grandmother. So we are going out. So I told her, hey, Papa is going out. Don't you ask him to get chocolate or something for you? Of course, I'll ask. Papa, kindly get me nice chocolates, okay? Don't get only one. Get a big packet. Okay, beta, I'll get it. We came back. I knew that he has not bought. So when we came home, then I don't like peace. The house should be full of chaos. Otherwise, you feel you are going to hospital or what? So to create chaos, I went to that girl. I said, hey, your father has got chocolates, get me. She came running. Papa, I know you have brought chocolates for me. Thank you. Oh, darling, I forgot. And she went coolly. My plan failed. <laughs> then I said, I must do something. Then I went, hey, your father didn't bring chocolate for you. Didn't you feel bad about it? He said, no. Had he brought the chocolate, it was a surprise. I know. He says so many things. But he never does. Even the child has learned this. Learn. He'll grow wise. And every experience can teach you. So when I was talking like this to doctors, he said, Swamiji, how can you think like this? Now you are enjoying the walk in the waters. It is so nice weather. Instead of that, you tell, see, this water, this thing, this thing. How can you think like this thing? Because you have to learn, you have to go beyond the box, in box thinking. We are all thinking in a box. Our box is, what will I get? See, nasti buddhi ayuktasya. Then, nacha yuktasya bhavana. Those who do not have this knack, they cannot remain aware of their own being. Not only that, they can't do this bhavana. What bhavana? Just try this. I am most unfortunate, miserable. Within a period of two weeks or one week, you will really become miserable. Or, do the other way around. Now these ladies will know it. I got great regards for the ladies. 
बिकॉज वॉट दे डू इज द हाइएस्ट भावना दे आर लिविंग विद देयर पेरेंट फॉर सो मेनी ईयर्स एंड ऑल दैट एंड दे गो टू द हजबेंड हाउस एवरी थिंग दे हैव टू गिव अपो अर्लियर सम बडीज डॉटर सम बडीज सिस्टर आफ्टर कमिंग टू दिस न्यू हाउस दे हैव टू भावना आप इस बेवकूफ की बीबी हो All the wives are happy, <laughs> <laughs> and initial days, the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law fighting goes on. Then time passes. Then children are born. Earlier, every now and then calling mom, calling mom, no more. After some time, there is no time because now the bhavana has changed. First, I am a wife, I am a mother, and then I am somebody's daughter. those who are not able to do this bhavana they can never settle in their married house all the time hamare ghar mein aisa nahi tha and therefore they suffer this ability to bhavana apply subjectively and the abilities we don't have to tell others then we are divine what exactly divinity means work on two things never justify you are miserable never justify you are unfortunate when you do this bhavana then what will happen you will be at peace with yourself nasi buddhi ayuktasya na cha yuktasya bhavana na cha bhavayate shanti hi and he who cannot practice this then i am happy i am okay i am perfect such a person can never never be at peace and ashantasya kuta sukham a person who is in pieces how can he be happy see friends this is the importance of this sadhana this uh, dharana therefore remain more and more awareness slowly slowly the impact of mind will start getting erased and this impact of mind on our life is called as swabhava or acquired nature it is not essential nature acquired nature like the children some children they keep on eating the nail it has become their second nature so i want to do my son you know he constantly eats the nails what to do send him for ramdev baba's yoga it will stop all the yogis have that funny notion everything can be cured by yoga everything so the child was sent to ramdev baba's yoga so how is it swami ji now he eats the nail of the toe <laughs> <laughs> Don't get lost. The real spiritual practice is give up this swabhav and let the swarup surface. And for that, only technique is learn, learn, learn. then everywhere you get a message everywhere there is not a single place which is not teaching us provided we are in that learning mode see this was the first dharana then we go to the second dharana maru tontar bahir vapi viyad yugma nivartanat bhairavya bhairvasyattam Bhairavi vijjate vaho. Now the same prana is being taken. Now, <clears throat> when the breathing is out, it is called as prana, and when the breathing in, it is called as apana. So, outside is the dwadashanta, and inside the dwadashanta. 
between these two, the life is playing. And when we throttle somebody, this movement of the air between the two Dwada Shanta is arrested and the person dies. So, these are the two points between the external and internal. So, now, again and again I am repeating, don't bring your mind into your meditation. You will see most of the places, particularly Yoga Shastra, they talk about mind. When they say, uh, practice Trataka, so what is that? Keep one flame, a candle, and keep on focusing on that. No. Look at the world, not with concentration, but with awareness. When we are practicing to live in awareness more and more, we reach a stage called as, technically, Rutambhara Prasnya, or intuitive experience. Intuitive experience is not the routine way of going through the experiences. But the intuitive experience takes us beyond the limits of the cause and effect. Friends, all of us have this. Don't you know, sometimes don't you feel See, I was just thinking of him and his phone came. I don't know how this happens. Many people ask us, then I tell, no, these are the signs of evolution. <laughs> when your mind is non-reactionary at peace, you transcend the cause and effect realm and merge in the consciousness. That awareness we have to practice more and more. Therefore, when these two uh, points are clearly understood. Now, next step. When the apana goes in, there is a small pause. Don't hold. Naturally, pause. Then again the prana comes out and this apa, the prana which comes out from the heart, it goes up to Dvadashanta and disappears. And it is not over. Then in a fraction of moment, again it enters. So these two points, when there is suspension of the movement of the prana going inside and outside, in that suspended moment of movement, remain aware. Relax. No tension. Don't bring the mind in between. To begin with, keep any one point, either the external or internal. Internal is easier. Just we are aware the apana has entered and the prana is going. Apana has entered, prana is going. So that particular point between the entry and exit, between these two events, there is a fraction of moment when there is no movement. Most of the students they go to sleep because we have trained our mind 
whenever the mind is quiet, go to sleep. And then their meditation is a unique mudra. So they will be sitting and after every two seconds. So they ask us questions. So I mean, in our ashram, many students, when they sit for meditation, now what happens? They do like this, they like this. What are these things? And this is called a jatka meditation. <laughs> because the moment the mind is quiet, we have trained the mind to go to sleep. But if you simply remain aware of that, breathing has come and gone, now I'll take you next step, be very, very attentive, how to reach your awareness. Sounds we hear, silence also we hear. Like, if I am saying, Sri Ram, Sri Ram, Sri Ram. How many times I said? Three times. Why it is three times? Because between two Sri Ram, there was absence of the sound. Then, sounds we heard, silence also we heard. So, Sounds and silence, they come and go. But we have neither come nor gone. Taking that position is remaining in awareness. But when you focus attention on the silence, mind will go to sleep. Then how do we know we have reached or not? Very simple thing. Sounds will not disturb us and silence will not enhance our peace. Like, be attentive. You are so many sitting over here. I am looking at you. Now, instead of so many of you, if you become 10,000, will it be a burden to my eyes? And if all of you go away, will it be a loss to my eyes? Then what are the eyes? They are supporting both the presence of the colors and forms as well as the absence of them. And therefore, they are other than that. Come back to yourself in the same manner. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Nothing happens to you. Because the mind is not born. But when the mind is maintained by whatever methods, then that mind is collecting innumerable impressions in the form of likes and dislikes. And when the body falls, the mind is carrying with it all the impressions. And again, when the right time comes, again new life begins from where the mind has left the earlier body. But if, be very attentive, but if the mind is dissolved before the departure from the body, there is no possibility of further birth or death. That is what Bhagavan says, Sitva Syabanta Kalebi Brahma Nirvana Murchati. And this can happen only through wisdom. There is no other way. Like when the divorce happens, what happens to the wife or the husband? Nothing happens to them because they never existed.
in this manner when we learn the art of remaining more and more in this awareness so we start from these two points air gone out a fraction of moment nothing again comes in then again goes out a fraction of moment nothing again comes in slowly we train our mind to be aware of the absence of the movement of the prana this is done in yoga shastra forcefully and what they call it as bahir kumbhak and antar kumbhak so they will be breathing out and hold the breath outside question again samaji how long we have to hold the breath outside half an hour <laughs> then what will happen no question will come <laughs> my question will be solved hey friends don't forcibly do it the moment you apply force mind is created let seeing happen but don't see anything is it okay same ji let hearing happen but we don't hear anything yes okay oh that means we are practicing perfectly well <laughs> let the body be not born now we go to the next धारणा न व्रजे न विषय शक्ति मरुद्रूपा विकासिते निर्विकल्पतया मध्ये तया भैरव रूपता निर्विकल्पतया मध्ये विकल्प इज ए थॉट एंड थॉट्स आर ऑफ टू टाइप्स वेन द नॉलेज इज गेन्ड थ्रू द माइंड there are only two ways of gaining the knowledge for example this book is in my hand how the book is understood book is in the form of existence of the book then i remove this book now what is in my hand there is no book everything in this world is recognized by us through the mind in the form of is and is not asti nasti pratyay everything now this is evening this is not the morning is is not this is bambolim this is not chaupati i am a man i am not a woman See, everything in this world is always recognized as these two options these two options are called vikalpa now <clears throat> go further do we have the vikalpa option that i am not we can never have this option of experiencing our absence if we cannot experience our absence is it necessary to say that i am for example if i go on telling you everybody hey i am a man look here i got a beard i am a man i am not a woman i am a man people will say nobody doubted you why you are doubtful <laughs> think therefore here the teacher says nirvikalpataya madhe when thus our mind has given up these options that time mind is free from thoughts mind minus thoughts is consciousness consciousness plus thoughts is mind 
happiness plus wife is husband. Husband minus wife is happiness. How simple it is. The day you get this point and therefore don't think too much. All the time, cock, 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 cock. It's so disgusting. And then we are fed up of our own mind. Then we want to quieten the mind. See? Then either take a pill or pillow. Even that also doesn't happen. Pillow. <laughs> the idea is suspend the thought formation. The moment any thought is erupted, the mind is born. And this mind is making us miserable. See, in Yoga Vashishta, Vashishta Ji tells Bhagavan Ram, you have to transcend the mind with the help of the mind. See, friends, we transcend the mind with the help of the medicines. Take a sleeping pill and your mind is all soft. But afterwards, again it revives. But when the mind is transcended by the mind, the mind dissolves. And it can happen only through wisdom, proper understanding. Then you will come to know consciousness and mind, both are knowledge. Mind is that knowledge where objectivity is predominant. And consciousness is that knowledge where objectivity is absent. And what is our life? We are giving too much importance to the objective world. And this importance is given to the objective world by the trick of the mind. But we are not able to understand it and get victimized by that. When we don't know anything, we don't desire that. The moment we know something, desire starts coming out. See? Therefore, the more we become aware of this, and let the mind be quietened. Nirvikalpataya madhe. Then what happened? Na vishet vraje na shakti marudrupa vikasite nirvikalpataya madhe. So be attentive. When your mind is quiet, like in the morning meditation class you experience this, when the mind is quiet, your breathing becomes extremely slow and shallow. Because the quality of the breathing depends on the quality of your mind. If the mind is agitated, breathing can't be cool. Or if the breathing is very much strongly going on, mind can't be cool. They are together. Yogis struggle with the breathing. And how the struggle, they create the mind. They are told, close one nostril and by the other nostril pull the air inside and count four. One, two, three, four. Then maintain the air inside. Count eight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then leave the air from the other nostril and count 16. 1, 2, 3, 16. <laughs> and a struggle with the breathing and with the mind. And competition. 
contrary to that, take Bhagavan Ravan Maharshi's technique. It is called as the Vikshana Pranayam. He attained these very simple techniques, not complicated. We can not breathe any time except in the present. Effortless breathing happens only in the present. And if you are simply aware of breathing is going on, now what is happening? Both breathing and knowledge, both of them are the two shoots of the same source called as consciousness. Chitta Vayavaha, Chit Kriya Yuta, Shakha Yordvai, Shakti Mulaka. These two aspects. Knowledge and action. Knowledge is mind, action is breathing. Both of them originate from the same conscious principle. And breathing happens only in the present. And if we remain aware of the breathing, minds going in the past and the future will be automatically arrested. And then the mind will be trained to remain in the present. And such a person always is at peace. What is the disturbed mind? Disturbed mind is that mind which is running from place to place time to time and object to object. When the mind stops running from place to place, time to time and object to object, that mind dissolves in consciousness. This is achieved in Yoga Shastra by Dharana Dhyan Samadhi. See. Therefore, these Techniques are so simple, they are not complicated. Na vrajen na vishe shakti marudrupa. So, these marudrupa of the nature of the prana, na vrajen na vishe, neither going out nor going in, when nirvikalpataya vikasite, when the vikalpa are minimum, slowly. The breathing becomes extremely slow and shallow. In the morning I told you, when the breathing becomes deep, you are entering sleep. That time the mind goes back to Prakriti. And when the breathing becomes fast, the mind is getting identified with the body. Going to sleep, and getting identified with the body, mind goes back to Prakriti, not Chaitanya. But when the mind dissolves in consciousness, then the fulfillment happens. See, friends, therefore, na vrajen na shakti marudrupa vikasite nirvigulpadaya madde taya bhairava rupata. In the fourth sadharana, Kumbhita rejita vapi purita va yada bhavet tadante shantanama so shaktya shanta prakashade. I think we'll take it in our next class. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Yodamaha Hari Om